Welcome back to some daily cribbage. Poem of the day is Alicia. And we'll start off with Oh, a double run, but it's not as good as the twelve. It turns out that three four in the crib's actually not too bad. Unfortunately we have to get rid of this five here. It's a little bit too dangerous. I think that, yeah, I, I went 10, oh, I went 5 the second time round. In hindsight, we could have gone 10. Keep the 6 points. And what do you do here? We'll open up the runs. We could have 4, 5, 6. Go to 23. Nice, and we get the double six. So the point was if they went six first, then we would get, uh, we had the two for 31, and if they went five first, then we leave the six left over for the uh, next time. I think we just have to go for straight points. Nothing crazy. Let's keep the double ace in the back. Maybe we can make 31 or get a double. Nope. They had the two. A lot of even numbers from our opponent. Even numbers are worth a lot less than odd numbers. It's a funny little fact. And we'll keep a flush. If we were desperate for points, I think we keep six, seven, seven, nine. And we'll take this ace. Huge crib puts us squarely in the lead. Let's see if we can get to 70. We'll do that with the 677. You can combo with stuff, and they might give us some points on the play. There are some points, but it looks like our opponent might have a lot of points in hand. Yeah. 14 points there from our opponent, which means that well, they've caught up in terms of score, but the position still favours us a lot, because we want to try and get to 96 now, and we're expected to get there in a couple of turns, get rid of one of our eights, keep lots of numbers. Let's go to 20. A lot of hearts. Let's see if they've got a 10. A lot of hearts, alright. Nothing in the crib. But that's okay. We have a big hand. Oh dear. That's uh, it's not good. We have a lot of points in the crib now. And considering that we only have two points, opponent getting lots of points on the play, I sort of zoned out there. <laughs> that, is a, that is a huge punishment. Wow. Okay. Eight queen. In hindsight, was a lot better. What do we want to? Let's go two. I 
ace, t3, ace with a three on top. That was that was rough. We didn't get skunked. We gave up quite a lot of points on the play, I think. Or a lot of moments that we should go back to. Let's have a look at one of those quickly now. Okay, let's come back to this position. Uh, the situation is the opponent has 87 and we have 88. Our hand is 4, 6, 8, jack, jack, queen. We're looking to get to 96 points. We want another 8 points and we're currently a uh, pwn. So we want, we want a little bit more than what our hand is giving us. If we throw away 6, 8 as I did in the game, which the computer highlights as being unnecessarily risky, putting too many points in the crib uh, for not enough points in hand, then we're going to still fall a little bit short of 96. I think we're, our hands are going to, on average, get us about four or five points. Um, but that's, of course, an average. When we, when we hit uh, our, our outs here, and what are the outs? The outs are aces that combo with the four uh, to give us eight points, possibly nine points. Half of the time, nine more, more uh, nine points because we've got two jacks. Uh, when we have a ten or a king, we make the double run, and so that's going to give us eight or nine points again. And there's actually quite a lot of outs there. And that was the that was the intuition behind six eight or when I say intuition, that was just the the feeling I had when I instantly threw away six eight. The other option is to play a lot safer. So it's to play safe and imagine that your opponent is gonna have a hard time getting to ninety six, which <laughs> I have a hard time imagining that myself. I think that our opponent's going to get to 96 most of the time. They only need 9 points over the hand, the play, and the crib. That happens so often. And the only thing that we're really thinking about is whether we are going to make up for a lack of points here in the future, get our position or edge back. Because up until this point, we've been really sailing without too much resistance. We have... Um, we've been going at full speed ahead, getting to our milestones nice and quickly. But in this hand, we don't have any of the goods. So, in hindsight, I think that having these nine outs to make uh, 96 is, is good. The other option here is to play safe, is to play safe and throw away something like 8 queen or 6 queen. So this would give us some of the outs. We still have outs with aces and jacks, I guess. Of course, in that case, we only have 6 outs instead of uh, 9. Well, in the previous case, we had also jacks being some outs as well. So. Previously, we had maybe 11 outs to get six or more points. And in this case, we would have, if we threw away, say, six, uh, eight and queen, if we wanted to get six or more points, we could also hit... Um, oh, in the previous case, we could also hit fives, but it's very hard to count five as an out when it's going to help your opponent so much automatically. So in this case, let's not count fives. Let's let's just count our six or more points coming from aces, nines. Well, there, now that we keep a six, nines are opened up. We also have our jacks. So getting six points isn't too much of a problem as if we really wanted to get eight points from our hand. And maybe we don't mind. Maybe getting six points is okay because we get to try and make a couple of points on the play. Now, with four, six, jack, jack, we don't really expect to make that many points on the play. It doesn't play very well. 
we've only got tens, fours and six. The only thing that we can maybe hope for is if we leather jack our opponent uh, and leather jack, keeping the four and the six in order to try and trap a five at the end. And in this situation, we could try the crazy play of discarding jack queen and keeping uh, four, six, and eight with the goal of trying to trap fives. We lead an eight, they play a ten, we play a jack, they, uh, we both pass, opponent plays, well, they would have to have two fives and uh, not suspect anything. And that's assuming maybe a little bit too much here. Instead, we can assume that we want to make as few assumptions as possible in order to try and get ourselves in the best position. And I think assuming that a 10, a king, an ace is going to come up on top is probably the smallest assumption we could make. But I'm, I'm also now open to making the crib a little bit smaller. Perhaps there are also some situations where we want to really uh, punish our opponent for having very few points. And queen eight really does that. We don't give up on too many outs and we allow ourselves to uh, get lots of points. Let's put some numbers to these discards. Okay, and this is the position. Um, right, so the computer ranks that eight queen is the best discard throwing away 6-8 is the best hand. With the best discard 8-queen, it suggests that the crib on average is going to be worth 4.29, and with our discard, it's worth about 6. So, we're average, averaging about 1 and 1.7 more. The thing that's very staggering, though, about the 6-8 discard is the variance. So if we have a look at standard deviation in that second column, 6-8 is extremely high standard deviation, whereas 8-queen is very low. And so 8-queen is... And so the interpretation that we should have here is that 8-queen is a very safe discard. It's a low number of average points with a small standard deviation, so it's going to happen very often. 6-8, on the other hand, is average quite high points, and the standard deviation is also very high. So that means that there, this hand has potential to get quite a low score and quite a high score. If we want to confirm that, we can have a little look at the histogram. So let's, let's zoom in. On the cribs, on the right-hand side, we've got eight queen. We can have a look at this distribution. It's got a, um, got a very high point over here on the left. It, it makes zero some of the time, and the biggest hand that it makes is, is 12. On the other hand, six, eight, you can see that the, the tail on the right-hand side for six, eight it extends well out, <laughs> well out to the right. It even goes up to 24. There's a 0.04% chance. And that's when our opponent, say, throws away 7-7 seven, seven and uh, an 8 comes up on top. Which can happen. If you can describe it, it will happen at some point. Um a little bug there. Now, the thing that I want to point out though is that with the 6-8, there are still some really big bars at the bottom that are only worth uh, were 0, 4, uh, and 2 points. Quite similar to the, the 8 queen throwaway. So that means that you know, each of these bars represents the probability of things happening. So if we counted all of the bars, say, below 6, it might be very similar to the percentage of all of the bars below uh, 6 for 8 queen as well. 
So maybe these distributions have very similar medians. It's just that 6.8 has a long tail, which makes the average a lot higher. So 6.8 isn't so bad to throw away. You just have to be okay with every so often uh, having your opponent get a, a huge crib. Now, when we add these, uh, or when we convolve or convolute these distributions together, we get the hand uh, minus the crib. And as you can see, uh, there are some situations here where when we take away the crib, because we're taking away something so huge, um, we get a very negative score. And sometimes we don't mind that. So remember that what this table is doing is ranking the hands based on the average expected score of the hand minus the crib. And when we're very far away from 121, that's a really good metric. It's a really good standard for ra rating your hands because later on in the game, if you have a big enough score difference, your position doesn't matter. However, in this case, the position does matter. We really need to get <laughs> eight points. And as you can see, there's no hand that really guarantees us eight points. We can keep the, we can throw away the six, eight. We can get the average of uh, 5.02 and here we can we can add in a target score which is quite a helpful function so let's add in this and let's make it easier to have a look at let's get rid of the minimum score and Hail Mary score okay so there's a fourth column uh, in hand and crib that we care about and this is uh, greater than eight percentage uh, what's the chance that we get eight or more in our hand here? And as you can see, if we throw away six, eight, then we have around a 33% chance to, to get eight or more. And you can also see that in the histograms. Uh, we've highlighted the bars that we care about. And as you can see, the bar when we throw away six, eight is, is quite high here. Though this is a little strange. We have a, oh no, there are two bars here right next to each other. We have the same chance of getting eight as we do nine. Why is that? It's because of uh, what we said before. We have two, we'd keep two jacks in our hand, which means that aces, tens, and kings, uh, they're either club or diamond, the same suit, or they're not, and if they're not, they give us eight points, and if they are one of those suits, we get an extra point. So, so. And if, whenever we hit one of those cards, there's an equal probability that we hit a, a club or a diamond. So they're exactly the same size. Okay, so I think that the conclusion is that six, eight, with a little bit of luck, around 33% you know, of the time, um, we get a very good uh, position for the next rounds. And maybe we have to be content with two thirds of the time trying to make up our deficit in some other way, maybe getting very lucky on the next round. But Overall, I think the play wasn't too bad, actually. It's just a shame that we got unlucky with the seven on top. It's those kinds of situations that make you sort of question what you're doing. And in this case, I think we just got a little bit unlucky. Of course, it happens. Uh, very high variance in this game. So I think that overall, it was a very good game and we didn't make too many other mistakes, small things here and there, and I will see you in the next one. See you later.